Namaste, Jai Hind. I'm sitting in Kowai in front of a person who for last 101 days has been traversing across the length and breadth of the state of Tamil Nadu with the Yen Man Yen Makkal Yatra. State President of the BJP, Anna Malaiji. Namaskaram. Namaste, sir. Manakam, sir. Today, 101st day, you were in the Singanur Assembly constituency. We have seen what is happening and I was watching. You had two union ministers and you had Vanati Srinivasanji also there. As you look back at 101 days, 226th assembly constituency, where you started, where you are, what's changed? So when we started, it was a BJP Yatra, uh, a group of BJP leaders, Karyakartas, we all assembled in Rameshwaram with a big ambition. We wanted the party to go very deep. We wanted to take Prime Minister to the nook and cranny of Tamil Nadu, to the hearts of all Tamilians. It was a very ambitious project, the way it was conceived. I don't think anybody in our country has conceived a project where you go assembly to assembly. Normally you go in a straight road or you traverse in some way or you skip certain parts. And when the idea itself was so big that people thought it will fail. But at 226th assembly constituency when we ended, sir, eight more to go, I would say this has become a movement. From a BJP Yatra, which Honorable H.M. Amit Shah Ji was kind enough to come and inaugurate it. To a people's movement where you see 80% of the crowd who come don't belong to BJP. And they come, they want to participate, be a part of this history. And, and understand very gently also, this Yatra is for the upliftment of their lives. So this massive change has happened. Second, sir, as a party, our cadres have become confident. So this is a state of big things where people in ruling, they do big things. Big pandals, big meetings, they do everything in a big way. Tamil Nadu, you know, yeah. it is over the top kind of state in politics. But now the Karikartas in 226 assembly constituencies, every constituency, the Karikartas putting their heart and soul. I, I, would, I would very well say now we have created a lot of leaders in the ground. Jameen Kadmi. They are in the ground. They are recognized by the people. And they feel happy that people have come for them. And they have a leader in their own locality, in their own village. 50 people came because they went and requested you should attend the Yatra. So these two things are very important for me, sir. We have created leaders in the, in the ground. These leaders will emerge in the next 5-10 years. You will see Panjayat presidents, you will see MLAs, you will see MPs. And the Yatra has become a mass movement. So you feel it's become a mass movement. Many say that it's a lot of hype on social media. And okay, in one street of one assembly constituency, you are able to create some interest and intrigue. People want to come take selfies. This is not going to happen. Many people have tried this. It's not going to translate into political gains for the BJP. How would you respond to that? The, the beautiful part of the whole thing, sir, uh, the Yatra and the opposition parties, uh, in fact, Mr. Chief Minister Stalin said on day one, it is a power Yatra, it's a Yatra of sin, hmm. day one when we started. Then they said, who will come for BJP? No crowd. Then they said, oh, crowds are coming, paid crowd. Then they said, crowds are coming, but they are coming from opposite party just to see what is happening. Then they said, people are coming because they want entertainment. Then they said, no, no, people are coming with curiosity because I'm seeing the whole face, sir. Mm. Though it is 101 day, the Yatra, of course, have taken some breaks for yes. Chennai flood and South Tamil Nadu flood. So it is literally about, we are, we are in the field for almost July 28 till now. Correct. So I'm seeing the transition of opposition parties the way they speak. So as we speak, now the opposition parties are like, oh, fine, people have come, but I'm very sure they will not vote. So this is the last step. The next step is the acknowledgement, which only the elections can give. Hmm. So we all can speak in the air, sir. But I'm very sure 2024, the elections will be an acknowledgement. Not this Yatra, sir. There are many number of things we have done. But the Yatra is one of the important things that we are doing. That Tamil Nadu is going to tell the whole India that, look, after 1967, a national party under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, J.P. Nadda ji, Amit Shah ji, all senior leaders, our Tamil Nadu hardworking leaders, is, has come to ground in Tamil Nadu. And this is going to be a preferred choice. Easier said, said than done, sir. But, but this transition at the emotional level, mind level has happened because people understand, oh, this party is going through a lot of struggle, going through a local constituency, picking up issues, talking, in fact, giving solutions, received more than 17,000 petitions, solving it. And all the leaders from the center taking time, coming. Not only the leaders attend their meeting, they do other kinds of things along with the Yatra. So a lo lot of leaders have come, sir. Today, Rajiv Chandra Shekharji, what did they do? Morning, he met the Malayali community of uh, Coimbatore. Then he had, a, he had an address with 2,500 young college students on the vision of Narendra Modiji for India. Then evening, he attended the Yatra. So this ministers, they spread around. 
So they speak lot of things. They meet lot of community people. So that is why we are very confident, sir. The elections can only be the parameter of some success, but the emotion, the people turn out, uh, even in social media, even in real media, even in the ground, or even the opposition's uh, political parties negativity. That is also an acceptable barometer. The more negativity opposition people talk against the party, accept it with two hands because that is also an indicator. Mm -hmm. So, on all indicators, I think we are doing well, sir. Thirty-nine seats of Tamil Nadu are very critical. to achieve what the prime minister said on the floor of parliament 370 seats for the bjp i'm not even coming to 400 par for nda because that adds only another 30 40 seats 400 par. but 370 for the bjp means kerala tamil nadu andhra telangana and odisha 121 seats and it's not even 12 to 15 seats in this and if you take away odisha then not even 10 seats out of 100 39 seats how many seats you think the bjp can win this time or even put up a fight so the prime minister is putting his heart and soul um, this 2024 january the first event he came to tamil nadu again one more event he came to chennai i am talking of this year alone 27 he is here in paladam this month 28 he is in thoothukudi 28 the pm is in tirunelveli again march first week is expected to come to tamil nadu so so prime minister is leading from the front as a person the most busiest person in our country the prime minister of our nation has decided to give his time more than any other state to tamil nadu in terms of his visit coming meeting people now this is an indicator that pm has taken the results from tamil nadu very seriously and we all know pm is one guy who is not very concerned about results per se and he believes in the process he wants to put his heart and soul into the ground that is what all of us are doing sir this 39 seats you know for a fact i know for a fact in 35 seats bjp never had a history of winning yes that's a fact that's Correct. an acknowledged fact in four seats we have a history of winning at different points of time 99 2014 2020 one assembly elections in four places now in 35 seats if i say something now it might appear very bombastic because i've seen the ground sir i've seen the emotional connect i know in a place like dharmapuri if i say for an outsider they'll say oh bjp is okay with uh, in kongu area bjp is okay with south but what about north but we are the highest turnout in the north we are the highest youth youth in an area where they said bjp is not even there now many a times when our team we sit down we analyze why why it happened what it happened sir because those are the places the aspiration is more they believe the dravidian politics or the so called dravidian development model did not touch them i keep reeling out statistics sir four districts of our state it contributes 32% of the state economic output coimbatore where we are sitting now chengalpattu chennai kanjipuram four districts the yesterday i was in karur my my home district karur contributes 1.3% there is a district arialur 0.9% so this are the areas where people are coming out more they said look the development did not touch me 70 years of dravidian politics have disgusted me i am left alone i am only listening to empty promises same people in tv they watch modi ji's development in in youtube and twitter they 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 try they try and understand modi ji's vision of a vikshit bharat developed bharat so it is youth women middle class with a child they are coming out in large numbers trying to see what is their vision of course we are also very bold sir not only are we using this yatra of course very importantly to propagate prime minister's message we are also giving out certain policy suggestions as we come in the yatra in 226 we have literally told our manifesto for 226 in three speeches we have covered education when bjp comes to power in tamil nadu what is our education model tamil nadu doesn't have navodaya schools we said in two one district will bring two navodaya schools it will be in the name of kamarajaraya we will bring because tamil nadu there is a distinction between haves and have nots yeah. we have given a very realistic policy assessment of alcoholism in our state tasmak alternate revenue model opening up todi shop we have spoken about policemen reforms in police we have spoken about reforms in land revenue act we have spoken about reforms in temple administration mm. hrnc, HRNC in sri lanka mm. so now people don't see this as yatra alone sir in 226 the party has broadly given a broad outline of if we come to power this is what you will expect from us so we have given very clear distinctive idea and we have gone one step further also in terms of job creation we have said 
a certain percentage of jobs will be reserved for a family where no government job has entered into that family for generations. No government job from that family, a certain percentage will go to them. So every, this has become a big debatable topic. DMK responds to them, no, how will you give? DMK responds, what is your revenue methodology you please give us? They say, you don't want uh, HR and CA, how will you run temples, please tell us. So many television channels have taken this as a 8 p.m. prime time debate. This and that. So I would say overall, the vision of Prime Minister, the work we have done, going forward, what BJP intends to bring to the table. We are not just a party, a one-trick pony, uh, which will just criticize DMK every day, say DMK is bad, DMK is bad, DMK is bad. We have gone beyond it. We say DMK is bad. But how are we good? So please listen to us. This is what we bring to the table. So this is the overall thing that has brought a lot of youths, women, the so-called aspirational class out to see, okay, this is the party of my choice, which I am very fairly confident, sir. Even this 35 seats where we never had a history of winning, hmm. you will see a massive jump perception-wise, mind-wise for anybody sitting outside Tamil Nadu watching what is this crazy thing happening inside that state. You will see states, sir. I am I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not a person who is going over the top to say this is the number, that is the number. But I am going to say with a single line that we are going to make history in 2024. That hmm. is for certain, sir. Hmm. But you think the BJP is ready to contest all 39 seats in Tamil Nadu? So all 39 seats we have candidates, sir. It is not that we don't have candidates. All 39 seats we have interest. All 39 seats we have an idea because we did homework long time back. We have put constituency in charges for all the 234 constituencies months ahead of other parties. We have put parliamentary in charges for all 39 seats months ahead of other parties. So preparation is two year old. So we have anticipated, we have worked a lot of things in the ground. We have introduced a lot of leaders. We have introduced them to the people. That is one part, sir. Second part, we are very clear. National Democratic Alliance, our parliamentary board, they take a call. Tomorrow, an alliance partner is contesting in a seat. We will fight if it is there, our seat. And our cadres also ready, leaders also ready. Now, gone are the days when people say, oh, BJP might be there, but where are the leaders? Because we are very conscious, sir. We are going against five-time MPs, six-time MPs. Correct. Multiple ministers. And unlike other states, this is a state where people are in politics. You take, you take TR Balaji, for yeah. example, Sri Parambudur. What is his age, sir? 83. When did he enter politics? How many times MP? How many times minister? So you are taking on this kind of people. So we are very conscious of the fact our opposite party is not only powerful, their candidates are not only well known, they are interested into the yeah. system very deeply. Well, very deeply entrenched. And that's why I'm asking you that a big player like the ADMK, not part of the NDA. Many within the ADMK and the political circle say that the only reason why EPS walked out of the NDA is K. Annamalai. How would you respond to that? Annamalai, I, if Annamalai is out of the equation, Edapati Pandi Swami and uh, ADMK will walk back into the NDA. I, I reserve my comments on this, sir. Only thing I can say, uh, every alliance partner, BJP, we have treated with respect. And of course, BJP, we have decided that when we, when we show Tamil Nadu that we are serious about it, we told 2026 we want to come to power. That is where the first friction started. Hmm. And they said, oh, how can you say that you are want to come to power in 2026? We want to come to power in 2026. Then, of course, our cadres and leaders respond. There is nothing wrong. It is a people's mandate. So I'm talking of three-year-old yeah. history. If you look back, the friction points that got generated here and there. So BJP, we believe. We don't want to hurt anybody. We are very clear. But of course, we want to tell Tamil Nadu people, look, this is us. This is we as a party. And this is our plan. Tomorrow, we just don't want to come to the table and say, DMK is bad, vote for us. People don't vote like this, like that, sir. You have to say DMK is bad, but people are asking, what about you? You tell us what you are doing. Mm -hmm. What's the solution or alternative yes. you're going to give? But in this case, many would say that the moment you make it a three-way fight, DMK, ADMK, BJP, plus their allies, however you were to say, you're splitting the votes. And that will only work to the advantage of the incumbent, that is the DMK. How would you see that? That's a very traditional political way of thinking, sir. Politics changes so fast, 1991. One of the worst elections for DMK because DMK won two seats, two, two, two assembly members, uh, assembly if you take. DMK's vote share was about 20, 21, 22 percent, sir. 2014 parliament, one of the worst elections for DMK, got routed literally. DMK's vote share was about 22. So I believe DMK's vote share is somewhere between 20 to 22 as a party. As a party, that is what they bring to the table. That is their cadres vote. That is why DMK, every time they stitch a larger alliance, they want Congress, they want this, they want caste-based party, they want to make it more than 31, 32, 33. And I believe the two Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu, 
they are between 20 to 22 percent each of them at different points of time. So you are saying overall about 44 percent votes it. is with the Dravidian parties. That's it. So there is a clear 55 percent clearly that is against the Dravidian parties which a newcomer like Vijay Kant will have a certain cushion of 10 percent for some time. Kamala Hassan will have some 6-7 percent for some time. A person like Seaman will have a couple of percentage, 5-6 percent for some time. So these are very floating votes. A newcomer it goes, it waits. Again, newcomer comes, it goes. So you see this, this is a, this is a voting base that keeps shifting. Now this 55%, now I believe it is more than 55%, it is waiting for a stable third party. It doesn't want a party that comes, comes in the horizon, be there for a certain point of time, vanishes. This 55% will decide. So why am I bothered about split in votes, sir? So my head and our head, the party is very clear. 55% of vote is outside the loop. That, of course... 20% might vote for one Dravidian party because it thinks this Dravidian party is bad, I'll vote for this guy. That is the alternate model of Tamil government. But I believe that 55% are not Dravidian party's hardcore voters. They're waiting. That is what elections have told us at different points of time. So I am very optimistic. In a three-way fight in a state like Tamil Nadu, a party that crosses 28-29% in our state in a, in a pure arithmetic calculation, you are the winner. So this election, let us wait for any traditional person saying, oh, BJP has grown that I accept. I keep seeing this TV where a lot yeah. of pundits keep saying, but BJP is going to be a vote cutter. It will allow this party to come. I refuse to believe that theory because I believe, sir, that so-called neutralist, if they decide, for me, it is not A and B. There is also a C. Let me vote for C. I don't think the traditional mindset is going to work this time. So you are saying that it will split four ways or three ways 100%. and anybody who gets closer to 30 percent in this three-way fight gets the mandate but would you also accept that for that to happen not just an anamalai needs to contest but beyond the prime minister coming regularly the prime minister also needs to contest from Tamil Nadu. would you think the dynamic will change if pm decides to contest from Tamil Nadu? sir 20 uh, for 2004, if, if I may be very honest, sir, though I belong to, uh, I'm a Karikarta, you know, I came into the politics for Honorable PM. I'm here because of Honorable PM. I sweat it out because of Honorable PM. Now, 2004 was, a, was, was an election where candidates was 50%, party was 50%. 2009, candidates 50%, party 50%. When PM Modiji came in, Modiji, party 60%, candidate 40%. 2019, Modiji party 80%, candidate 20%. This time I am giving it in writing. Modiji BJP party 95%, candidate 5%. So the shift we are seeing where candidates are becoming redundant across India. They are like, look, Modiji has to come to power. He has to cross 400. What I have to do? I have to vote BJP. This is the mo model I am seeing in Karnataka. I am seeing in all states of this country, sir. I am sure the same model is going to work now. So every place, where I specifically mention a lot of our leaders speak, look, candidate for you doesn't matter. You are voting for Modi. That is Modi's guarantee. We are not giving you candidate's guarantee. Candidate is answerable to the party. We have a system to monitor. Candidate is answerable to Modi ji. Modi ji is answerable to you. Simple calculation. So 95% this time in Tamil Nadu, across India, the pattern will be here. 95% Modi ji party, 5% candidate because they know this democracy is going through a flow now. It is going through a flow where the trust on Modi ji is the pulling factor. But if PM were to agree, like the last time when he said Vadodara and Varanasi, so if he decides saying Varanasi and say Tirupur or Coimbatore, you think that will make a difference? Will sir, that change? Sir, it is a party scholar. Let me also ask you, would Annamalai and the BJP cadre here want the PM to announce one of the constituencies and contest from Tamil Nadu sir, to show the intent sir, you that know, the BJP is serious. You know I am not a very parochial person in terms of mindset. I would ideally want PM to contest in, PM to have the same impact in all the 543 seats as if the PM is contesting. Correct. Every part is important. I would ideally prefer PM to have the same impact in all the 39 seats as if he is contesting. Now the, now the question before me is, can we create the same magic even if the PM is not contesting. Hmm. That is what the whole toil and hard work, sir. If PM is contesting one of the seats, why this hard work and toil? Because then that's when the exponential benefit that the BJP needs in Tamil Nadu to breach this wall 
will will come that there is a there is a there is a sentiment which says if the pm is so intent on uh, his commitment to tamil nadu and the south beyond karnataka then he should contest from here and 2024 is the best time i'm i'm asking you you are you are planning I, something I, very big no, no, in sir, palada I, so i i my personal belief sir people of tamil nadu has gone gone beyond that measure of only if somebody is contesting here then probably i i know that that person is trusting my soil and my people Mm. now the emotional connect with pm is so deep you, you see sir the 11 day 11 day anusthan and pm did yeah i was last, coming to that ram mandir how last, much of an impact ha huh? okay please sorry sir the last two days of his anusthan happened in tamil nadu mm. and like many karyakartas i also had the privilege of watching the whole thing happening very closely as a karyakarta from the outside what is happening and that i would say is something that has moved the needle probably we all say the last straw on camel's back you put that last one the camel will break kasi tamil sangam saurashtra tamil sangam pm doing everything for tamil nadu culture so taking the language across thirukural of course many things but that so you could see the toil in his face a person coming here fasting sleeping in the floor in rameshwaram going to uh, sri rangam present in the kambar mantapam which no which no no tamil politician of dravidian politician cared about the whole thing what we what we talk now we believe probably it is the last straw on camel's back of course ram temple is a big thing in tamil nadu it is politicians will say oh ram temple in ayodhya how is it going to benefit us do you think it is going to benefit us no, sir it is not about you build one temple and the votes is going to come so bjp doesn't believe when you switch on the switch here lights will glow here it is not that theory sir the theory is two things one ram is so connected to tamil nadu as is connected to the rest of our bharat because this state what has happened very purposefully very deviously very devious the kambaramayanam if you look at you go to all small towns of tamil nadu you will have a kambaramayanam club yeah. i don't think i don't think any other god has got a club or any other a book that is written for a particular god has got a club so and if you look at kambaramayanam it is across the world some of the finest kambaramayanam speakers reside in tamil nadu now why very purposefully the dravidian politicians decided this has to be given a stop this cannot allow to penetrate people cannot have kambarayam kamairam conference like a weekend thing or people cannot do this uh, chanting everything that is when very deviously they they chapeled they brought a chapel mala to lord rama they said lord rama is an outsider why lord rama is so viciously in the dravidian politicians mind so viciously treated as an outsider so viciously because they knew kambaramayanam and the impact kambaramayanam resonates with tamil people and the way you see the kambaramayanam clubs in a small town they very carefully very deviously said let us stop this whole thing let us portray him as an outsider i'm i'm very very sad and sorry that when when the whole thing happened a counter cultural political movement could have started in a matter of months if there is an opposite counter cultural movement then they could have literally stopped it there was a huge gap given till prodhi talaver mgr came and openly he said that that he is a pro hindu yeah. then madam jayalalitha came so that gap was filled by this devious people now we are breaching that gap after many many decades now to say look ram temple okay let us talk about rama now of course ramana swami has got a connect of course sri rangam has got a connect because the urchav murthy inside is a personal god of lord rama which yeah. was gifted to vibhishana it came this are two sir we have 150 lord rama temples in tamil nadu which are 1000 years old and this yatra we have visited about 30 32 of it you go to dharmapuri dharmapuri there is a place where rama did did tirtha he did a shiva puja for lord shiva there is a temple mm. sir of all places you go to arani yeah. putra kamateshwara where lord rama's father the great king he came he did a tapasa because he wanted a children he did a heaven lord rama was born because in arani in the putra kamateshwara temple his father did a tapas then you go you you skip one district you go near tanjavur you go to suryanar temple when jadayu for jadayu the last rite was performed by lord rama in tanjavur so you have a jadayu gundam there so it it is beyond my mind how this so called a politician for about cup two decades they very deviously covered everything made sure this temple so in the yatra there is an important thing we do sir we speak about the temple we visit the temple we highlight the temple so we make sure that look it is connected but this this gunda homa gunda what i am talking in suryanar temple the jadai gunda it sir it is it is thousands and thousands of years old 
It was there even before the Dravidian word came into a proper terminology. The Putra Kamatish were a temple, you go and check the, uh, the stone uh, thing inside, the archaeological thing inside. It was there even before the word Dravidian got coined. Lord Rama's father came here, did heaven because he wanted a child. child. Then Lord Rama was born. So anybody in their right mind, nobody will deny, oh Lord Rama is an outsider. So now people are realizing. So sir, now you, you see you see Ayodhya sir. Yeah. They say 37 lakh people have visited in three weeks. Correct. How many Tamilians sir? Every second person I meet in the street, in the Jatra, Anna Ayodhya Prasadam. Anna, we went to Ayodhya. We took a flight, we went there, we came back. Take Ayodhya Prasadam. Hmm. I am not sure whether Uttar Pradesh government has got a data outside where they see how many state people are coming, who are those people. If somebody is publishing that data, I would say Tamil Nadu would be number one or number two, sir. There are trains also flying to... Now ask the trains. Trains mm. running. It mm. is it is going from every single part. So so let me ask you, is it the Ram Mandir, Ram Nala, Pran Pratishtha in Ayodhya or is it the Prime Minister's Bhakti and Anushthanam that you think has, as you said, the last straw on the camel's back? So we are very emotional people and Tamil Nadu is a state that highly rivers a saint. That, that, rivers, that rivers a person who has forsaked everything for doing a moral duty. This is a, this is a land of Nayanmas and Alvars. Nayanmas and Alvars are not names, sir. Hmm. They, are, they are saints because they have forsaked a lot of things to achieve a, achieve a morality in the society. And Thiruvalluvar, you talk all the big names here. So we don't treat them as scholarly, intellectual. This is a state that rivers reverse the detachment part. The state always loves somebody is detached. And Modiji's sense of detachment, of course the sense of detachment in everything he does, but very specially, the 11 day Anusthanam he did, absolute sense of detachment, sacrificing food, the way he behaved in Rameshwaram when he stayed in the mutt, where the Swami came out and next day he gave an interview that SPG people have removed the cart and he slept in the floor. Yeah, and, 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 and you see, you see Ramana Swami temples are even to all the all the Tirtha, Tirtha Sestra, the Tirtha well, where he himself poured water, did the holy dip. He respected the tradition of that land. He went to the last point, Arichal Munai. He went there, stood there with reverence, bowed down. Then, then all the many important things the PM did, Kambara, Kambara Mantapa, where he said, in our national convention, PM said, the moment in his mind, when he sat in that Kambar Mantapam, listening to Kambar Ramayana from some of the greatest speakers in Tamil Nadu, he said that is a moment he will carry till his last breath. He, he particularly recalled this occasion in our national convention. He said that will be in my blood. So this is something that Tamil people know, this RPM is a person of detachment. So this Ram temple, yes of course it is an occasion sir. But the way a person took his responsibility and did Prana Pradishta, this is mood mountains in Tamil Nadu. So will you say, final two, three questions, I know you have positive time, it's a late in the night conversation that we are having with Mr. Annamalai, but he still has got engagements into the VRs. So let me ask you this, is this election now in Tamil Nadu between those who want to eradicate Sanatana Dharma and those who want to bring back the temple culture and to free the temples from the strangled hold of government? Is this now, that's how you would you draw this? So we have... Uh we have unbuilt the cat and we have let the cat roaming in the streets now. So this was a touchy topic which nobody touched for a long time. And we have touched a lot of things in the Yatra time including uh, some of the words that is put outside the temple, what BJP is going to do about it, what BJP is going to do about HR and see the plan and everything. So mm -hmm. now... Even Periyar's statue out at Sri Ranga, we, we, mentioned, said, we'll sir, take, we it take it respectful to a common place and mm -hmm. we don't want to demean to anybody. But that doesn't have any provision to stand outside the temple. And when we said it, a common man, even many from the... Dravidian party, they said this is the right approach. We are waiting for somebody like that. And this is the right approach. Let people go to a common place that whoever wants go on Garland. But in a, in, a place, in a place where faith is worshipped, let us not hurt that. Starting from this, sir, uh, HRNC, the mismanagement, the, the large, large amount of bunglement they have done. HRNC is down. happening even in your uh, previous avatar as IPS where you served in Karnataka also. This bungled up today you are seeing in Karnataka hmm. uh, some of the greatest disservice they are doing in that holy land. We are seeing that, sir. Now I would say a combination of Sanadana Dharma eradication, which not only Udayanidhi Stalin spoke, which also the DMK government partly was doing. Rama Prana Pradishta, sir. We had to go to Supreme Court, knock the door in the midnight, get our petition listed at 10.30 in the morning, get an order at 10.40, serve it to DGP by about 11.15. Then make sure the Prana Pradishta went 11, 11.30. Even for the finance minister, Madam Nirmala Sitaraman, who was inside a temple that doesn't have anything to do with HR, and she, she was prevented from watching. So people are watching it and they know, okay, I don't want this people. 
and of course BJP has got a plan. Of course, this is an important issue, sir. But we put it in a way that is understandable to a common man. A common person has to understand that's very important, not the intellectual class. A person who is in a village, who has got a small deity, who is very concerned that, that, the, that the way he worships his Kuladevada temple over centuries should not be affected. Now HRNC is entering that. Because HRNC Act says even in Kuladevada temple there is a dispute I will come inside. Yeah. So overall I would say sir, this election, Sanadana Dharma eradication and stranglement of government temples is going to play a major role in the way people, people vote and make their choice of voting. Hmm. But that could also polarize the vote. Those who believe that you are talking only Hindutva temples, the others may not come. You, are, are you okay or are you talking a language that polarizes the voter? Because that's another accusation that you are pushing a Hindutva agenda now. So you are not looking at Sabka Saath. Sir, now we have to understand, sir. Let us define Hindutva. Let us define Hindutva. Now, I respect my Muslim brother and sister. I respect my Christian brother and sister. If somebody goes and touches their church or their mask, I'll be the first person to condemn. And I say that everybody should have the same right. A Muslim brother and sister going to a mask free, the imam of that mask deciding how the mask should be run, or a Christian father deciding how his Sunday should be, uh, what kind of donation the church should get, what is the kind of sacrifice, offering they should do. The same right, I think, a Hindu temple should also have. So if people call I am polarizing, they should get their head checked. If any of the opposition party here in Tamil Nadu, they say Annamalai is polarizing, I am not doing. They were only polarizing till now. So what they were doing till 2024 is polarization, not us. And secondly, sir, and BJP as a party, we celebrate iftar. It's a party, BJP, Tamil Nadu, we celebrate iftar. But what we do is, we invite all our Muslim brothers and sisters. We say, let us, all of us who have our faith, who, what, we, what we practice, let us all celebrate each other's faith by not copying each other. Here we have politicians who will just remove Vibhuti because they want to go to a minority conference. We don't do that. Even when we host an iftar, I will be myself. And I want my Muslim brother and sister to be themselves. Because we believe this is the real value of secularism. Last year we hosted Christmas by the official BJP. Our leaders came, everybody came. We called the fathers and celebrated. So Tamil Nadu, over a point of time, the politicians believe hosting an iftar means you have to do appeasement. Hosting a Christmas means you have to do appeasement. Now when we do something different, it is very shocking to the established pattern of political thinking. They say who is this Anamalai or who is this BJP who are doing Hindutva. Which is absolutely wrong. Which is a thorough misunderstanding. And more importantly, the Muslims and the Christian brothers and sisters of Tamil Nadu like our approach. Mm -hmm. They say, if they are so conscious about their religion, they will be conscious about my religion also. They will not take mine for granted. Since they are taking their for granted. Interesting analogy. Now, 27th, Prime Minister is coming. There is something special that's planned. Do you want to tell us? A little bird told me that this is a never before in Tamil Nadu, not just Tamil Nadu, all India. What is the special thing? Sir, I don't know. The party is very ambitious and they want to receive PM in a very big way. And uh, I don't know, sir. They have taken 1,200 acre and the conference, Pandal itself, is close to 530 acre. It is, it is just a some of the great thing our party is attempting, our leaders and karikatas. And uh, the, the crowd and the people who come out of love for Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji will be the highest the Tamil Nadu would have seen after 1947. And uh, of course, when I come on national television, when I make this statement, I have to prove this in about six days' time. So I'm very consciously measuring my word and I'm talking. The 27th of February will be historic. Because we are very confident that will be the turning point for all the hard work we have put. And of course the joinings do happen. You are seeing a lot of people joining. Tomorrow somebody will join. Next week somebody will join. And uh, BJP has become a preferred joy, choice of people who want to come. The professionals, the technocrats. And we have a startup cell, sir. How many political parties can claim? And the person who joined our startup cell, the head who is heading our startup cell, is an ex-Intel engineer who has got patents to his name. And he quit everything in US. One day he was standing in our office. He said, I'm inspired by Modi ji. I want to do. I'm sacrificing my whole thing. What should I do? We said, okay, let us start a startup cell. Mm -hmm. So we run hackathons. Would you believe a political party in Tamil Nadu is running? We run hackathon. We want to solve some of the rural problems. The party is running a hackathon challenge. So we are completely, we have a sports cell, sir. So we have three ex Padmasris in sport who are part of Tamil Nadu BJP sports cell. We have seven Olympians who are part of our Tamil Nadu sports cell. We are reinventing politics in a way because we believe professionals should come in and without fear or favor, they should do what they are doing outside. And we say, let us not do politics. 
in a sports cell you take modiji's vision to the village startup cell you take modiji's vision to the village so so everything outcome will be in 2017 so i have to read between the lines are more than a million people expected to come on 27th are there going to be some significant people joining the bjp on that day and is the pm going to make a big announcement about lok sabha 2024 <laughs> sir pm sir is pm sir uh, you know that uh, uh, his speeches are always electrifying of course it's, it'll be the first political speech in tamil nadu uh, after 2021 so pm is yet to attend a political event in tamil nadu he has attended a lot of public events yeah. so this is the first political event so all of us are watching with with great amount of interest and second of course joinings do happen sir but that is not the forum where we say please come and join it happens in party offices in delhi and in terms of numbers let me just keep my uh, mouth shut for the day because i believe action should speak louder than words here uh, let let our actions be strong than our words and it will be historic sir finally final question we'll all watch people are also expecting a lot from you those who are coming to your padayatra those who are starting to support you they have a, a whole host of expectations so are you up for that challenge very tough sir they expect so much um, the, the 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 good thing and bad thing uh, in the current bjp now is all of us are measured to modi ji <laughs> you have to be like modi ji at least even 10% of what modi ji does you got to be punctual disciplined uh you got to be very emotional honest honest open uh proactive forward looking so so what modi ji has done he has completely changed the politics so of course we all carry the expectation of modi ji which, which i believe the expectation of modi ji is being transferred to us we are up for it sir else we will not be in politics and we are modi ji's foot soldiers and we'll get it done sir day minus 15 we spoke with anna malai day 0 we spoke with him day 50 we spoke with him day 101 we are speaking with him and very very soon after a few landmark announcements ahead of lok sabha 2024 perhaps on the campaign trail we look forward to speaking with you again on a very kind of you to come sir thank you sir thank you, thank you sir thank you. Thank you.